The Sobel SV06 Plus Ace has an MSRP of $350, typically on sale for about $300, but I bought this for $80. Yes, just $80. Well, $100 out the door, which is the first hint on how I pulled this off. The Ace variant here boasts up to 500 millimeters print speed, and the Plus upgrades our print area to about 300 millimeters cubed. Add auto leveling, a direct drive extruder, a nicer touch screen. While I didn't buy this off Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or seriously, any other similar sites like that, the previous owner did give up on it and should be kicking themselves over the silly fix that would have prevented it from being sent my way. We got this working, but it was more risky than a Craigslist buy because at least there, you can ask the seller to prove it's working. We were stuck as is. All right, so let's start unboxing and getting it working again, because I'm gonna give this to my brother-in-law for Christmas since he wants to learn about the hobby too. But first let's talk about PCBWay. Do you need 3D printing of your own CNC machining, custom PCBs, or even PCB assembly? They can take on any project, big or small, with no minimum quantities. And if you're still just prototyping, take your file, upload it, Answer a few questions like quantity of material, maybe color if you're 3D printing, and get an instant quote. The times I use PCBWay as an engineer lower my cost, so you really will get the true cost. New customers can use my link in the description below to earn $5 off your first order. While we unbox, let's talk about what we actually got here. The keen eyed may have already noticed the Amazon stickers on it because we bought this off an Amazon return and overstock auction site. That's why there's no return, and we're taking a risk that the previous owner returned this in good faith. This isn't actually my first attempt. I tried buying a Creality High Combo, but did get to return that one because the box contained an Ender 3 instead, and I hadn't left the building. It was a lot lighter than I expected the combo to be, thankfully. I opened it right in front of them. It was not what I bought. So in that case, I was able to return it. You can get items here from new and sealed all the way down to broken and salvage conditions. This was important because by now I'm realizing that there were a lot of loose parts. The print head was still attached to the frame, nozzle had a bunch of filament on it like it was clogged before returning, and all the screws were loosely thrown in the box without a bag. While this is more than I'd expect for a return, we also risk like say a screw slipping out of the box, gone forever, or being forgotten to be returned. Miraculously, it was all here. So we're gonna follow the instructions and get this set up. Of course, we can't do this without issues. It's done, but my first problem is I forgot my password to my 2.4 gigahertz only Wi-Fi. But after that, during calibration and before every print, it tries to do a Z-axis tilt calibration. And the bed is too far forward. So the print head keeps moving down. It doesn't stop until I turn it off because the nozzle isn't tapping the printer bed. So the printer doesn't think it's hit the bed yet, even though it obviously has, and it's just resting on a different part. Also related was every time it moved the print bed to the forwardmost point, it would do a few thumps, which I thought was very odd. No printer I've had has done that, even the cheapest printers. I noticed it didn't go all the way to the back, when there should have been more room, meaning that when it moved the bed forward, the bed was farther forward than the computer thought it was, which is why the nozzle wasn't tapping the bed. It was behind it. Okay, but why? Well, forum state most people forget the dense foam under the bed, but well, I had mine right here, so that wasn't it, and I triple checked for hidden foam all over the bottom. There was no obstruction moving it forward. It went all the way, awesome. But when I moved it to the back, 
Well, the bed plate power wires were sticking too low. This pinched between the bed gantry and the printer frame, stopping it from going all the way back. After pushing them back in the right spot, the wire shielding still looked good and I couldn't be more relieved. Again, I tucked them back in, the bed moved another inch or two backwards. Finally, another calibration and I printed the most boring and generic cube possible, but most importantly, it looked how I expected a boring generic cube to look, which is great news because I think I just fixed it. I don't want to do an actual review of this printer because I got it in questionable condition, but I wanted to run a few of my test prints to see how a built-in algorithm handles me asking it to go much faster. But first, a standard test object. The overhangs aren't great, but not awful either. The cylinders with clearances above 0.3 popped right out, which in my experience with the other brands is average. While again, I don't want to review it given the condition I bought it in. It seems to be a fine upper entry level printer and will be perfect for my brother-in-law who seems to want to do functional prints and doesn't need any material changing system. The first in my favorite test is how fast and well does it print a detailed benchy and a boring cube. Then I asked the printer to go faster. How does it react? In my bamboo any cubic and creality test, which is one of my favorite recent videos, it seems to be an algorithm or it just hits a limit of one of its of what it can do that still slows it down for details but allows you to go faster when it's able to. For example, with a bamboo, you don't get bamboo's advertised ludicrous mode of 66% faster, but I think I got a solid 40% in optimal conditions with a cube without any noticeable quality loss. The detailed boat uses default settings and at 100% speed, normal speed, it was done in 35 minutes. I printed again at 150% for a time of 32 minutes, 21 seconds, an 8% gain over normal speed. And then 200% for 31 minutes, 24 seconds, or 11.5% faster. Not the speed I was hoping for, but the quality was consistent. And it's in line with my other tests using other brands. Now the cube is optimal shape to test an algorithm because it's full of straight lines, even the infill. A default cube at 100% was done in 16 minutes, 24 seconds. At 150% speed, it was 12 minutes, 14 seconds for an impressive 34% gain. And 200% speed was done in 10 minutes, 17 seconds for an astounding 60% boost in print speed. But I want to put this in perspective. My Bamboo P1S has the best time at ludicrous speed, 7 minutes, 26 seconds for this cube. Granting a 36% speed increase, so while the SV06 has the biggest boost in print speed, it doesn't have the fastest base speed, resulting in a still overall slower print. When time is money, the SV06 isn't it, but I don't think anyone's looking for these in a print shop. For poops and giggles, I wanted to crank it, so I did a first layer test. Actually, first two layer tests. The first layer is not the time to test print speeds, but I did anyway. Immediately to 500%, the slicer estimated the time went from 2 hours at normal speed down to 30 minutes at 500%. Obviously, quality sucks, and I don't hold this against the printer. That's a ridiculous request. But I did slow it back down to 100%, 100% but I did slow it back down to 100% print speed, and we got a decent first layer. I lucked out with my Amazon return printer, but I also really enjoy fixing things others have given up on. In fact, the printers and devices I review are the only things I've bought brand new. These iFootage cob lights and my GoPros are also Amazon returns. 
The Canon R5C I'm talking to was bought in really, really bad, dirty condition. But I cleaned it up, and I think it was as is, honestly, because of a bad battery. These are high-risk, high-reward purchases going through Amazon Returns. So only go through this route if you're okay with that. But I love that challenge.